So the welter moves on to stage 18 now, and the battle is just as hot. Two first category climbs, a third to warm them up, and a second category climb near the end at Avia. 196.6 kilometers from Bejia. And this is now a battle between two men, it appears, after the tough ride there yesterday of Alejandro Valverde. After a very long day in the saddle, it's always a very nasty little climb up to the finish in the walled city of Avia. Well, here's the riders again. We're picking up the action. And it's been another day of good attacking rider. This is Javier Pascual Rodriguez on the right of our picture, who's just gone through here with uh, six kilometres still to run. And he's joined on the attack uh, by Ivan Para. If his name sounds familiar, well, it should be. He's the younger brother of the famous Para, who once dominated the Tour de France. And the Tour of Spain as well. They're running for the Café Barca team. And there's been a lot of attacking on this day today with the three big first category climbs. And at uh, just around about eight kilometres to go, there's a, another very serious group second on the road here. And it's uh, been a day when everyone expected, I think, to have a, a slightly easier day. But for some riders, it gave them a chance to uh, actually rattle the top end of the overall classification. Well, Felix Cardenas reminded us of his new position as head of the King of the Mountains by winning the first climb. It was a third category climb over the Alto de Valajera. Uh, but after that, the breakaway was starting to annoy the situation, and Juan Fuentes Aseco went over the second cat, just ahead of Para, and Buena Hora. There's a name we haven't mentioned throughout the whole of this year's at Welter. There's a man we used to mention an awful lot in the old days when he used to ride for the very serious Kelme squad. Just looking a little bit further back, there's Roberto Heras, uh, looking a little bit more comfortable now. There was a couple of challenges early on from uh, Francisco Mancebo. Tried to rattle the cages over one or two of the early first category climbs. Life in the hot, uh, these well, we used to call them the hot spot sprints, but life in the points competition at the intermediate sprints. Zabel got four points winning the first one after 25 kilometers, and uh, after that uh, took a back seat. But that might be very crucial at four points because he is still being challenged by the climbers in this year's Welter. It's not certain yet he's going to win. Well, these two guys inside of five kilometres to go right now, uh, Javier Pascual Rodriguez and Ivan Para, have got around about a, a 10 second advantage over the front end of this group, which seems to be trying to peg them back as they go under the banner, indicating seven kilometres ago. And there's another group moving forward here as well. Roberto Heras is in that second group on the road, as is Alejandro Valverde, who seems to have recovered just a little bit overnight. He's plummeted uh, quite a long way behind Roberto Heras now in the overall classification. He's uh, three minutes and 15 seconds in arrears. Well, these two leaders, they got away on top of the Puerto de Navamoral, which was the second category climb. And if they stay to the finish, that'll give them a breakaway of 20, 20 kilometers. And I think they might now. There's the finish in the uh, distance there. And uh, it's a day. Well, and Valverde will be grateful for a day off, I think, to try and recover from the hammering he took yesterday. And uh, I think Heras will be anxious to keep Santiago Perez out at the sharp end of the race because he's getting a bit too confident. He'll have to keep a very close eye on him over the next couple of days because it's going to be a very serious sort-out in the final time trial. And it may well go the way it did a couple of years ago when Roberto Heras, uh, on the final time trial, actually lost himself the overall classification. Four kilometres to go right now. Kelme leading out here with Javier Pascual and Ivan Para, the Colombian rider, in second position. Kelme, for the reputation of being one of the smaller teams, have certainly had a very successful went to Velta Espana so far. And I think up until yesterday, they probably thought they were going to walk away with the overall victory because Alejandro Valverde was only five seconds in arrears. But this, Phil, has been a very rough ride in towards the finish. And you can see the race is split up into three or four different groups. The two leaders are around the corner and they're holding on to around about a 10-second advantage, a 15-second advantage, I should say, over a chasing group. Well, six kilometres. This is beginning to be a day of them and us. These are the strong climbers. They've got themselves band together. Nobody has attacked this group at all today. Two riders who do not affect the destiny of the uh, golden jersey. Uh, just, just keeping things under control nicely. Valverde riding that lactic acid out of his legs from yesterday. The obvious man to win, I suggest, would be Javier Pascual Rodriguez to give him his full title because... He is the most experienced rider there. He's had uh, places in the big classics like the Grand Prix of Zurich and Liege-Baston-Liege. Isn't the big winner of races, though. He's only had three wins. 
and he's been a pro since 1995 now so he's getting on a bit he'll be 33 in November coming into the outskirts of town the two leaders are still holding on to their advantage and I think this is three kilometers to go for the two men and uh, you can see the Colombian rider is actually being put into a certain amount of bother when you get that acceleration when Pascal Rodriguez goes to the front five kilometers to go for the chase group they're a long way down they're almost three minutes in arrear so I don't think they're going to close that down over the next three miles of racing that's the group there containing Roberto Heras Francisco Mancebo Alejandro Valverde but it is Phil a very tricky run into the finish here and uh, very often we have seen uh, splits in the past and I do remember a couple of years ago seeing Aitor Gonzalez actually attack over the last kilometer and grabbing himself a couple of seconds over the rest and just seeing uh, the Kelme rider there Rodriguez just uh, releasing and retightening the clasps on his shoes just to make sure he feels comfortable for the sprint there we are again for you and there's no doubt he's planning on taking this one out if he can get to the finish line ahead of Para and he should Para is a better climber than a sprinter well that uh, is all very much psychological maneuvering trying to make yourself uh, get into the position of being ready for the sprint to start you don't want any accident there is the great walled city of Avia it really is a magnificent backdrop the Tour of Spain has been to this place on a number of occasions in the past but it's a rather tricky little climb up to the finish and you have to climb up uh, over a large cobbled road before you get into the center of town the scene in the past of uh, a lot of very last minute attacks which uh, when you think that the Vuelta a España is still really sorted out by a matter of seconds it's a moment when you have to be very attentive on the run-in. Yes, I remember back in 1999, Jean-Luc Vandenbroek winning here, and that uh, he wrapped up the points competition at the very end of the race. But whatever happened to Jean-Luc Vandenbroek? You mean, you mean Frank Vandenbroek? <laughs> <laughs> Jean-Luc, I remember what happened I'm to Jean-Luc. I'm getting Jean too old for this game. <laughs> Jean-Luc, I remember, actually was a former teammate of mine, but Frank Vandenbroek, uh, well, he really is the bad boy of Belgian cycling. He got a win the other day, by the way, a small Kermesse in Belgium. He still tries to keep his eye on, but he hasn't really had a good year. Just can't break back in. He's, uh, mentally, it's his mind rather than his legs because he still has an incredible talent. He certainly does. It was a small Kermesse in the little town of Zwevegem, which is just outside of Korterik. These are the two leaders now, and what a magnificent backdrop that is. It looks like a film set, really, but it is, in fact, uh, a fully fully walled medieval city that's the group of the, the main contenders Roberto Heras is in the group with second and third in the overall classification now Santiago Perez and of course Alexandro Valverde three kilometers to go for that group and it's still hovering at two and a half minutes now here's the walled climb now I wonder if there's going to be a challenge here from Para if I was Para this would be the ideal position to try and launch an attack. I was just what I thought he was going to do it as you said it. Then he looked as though he's about to accelerate, but he's got to use the climb, I think, because if it's a sprint, then Rodriguez will take it. And the crowd love this now. What a lovely place to finish a stage of any bike race here. But here comes the Tour of Spain. We've had a number of riders, by the way. Uh, three notables didn't start today. Michael Barry of US Postal, Alexander Vinokurov of T-Mobile, they're virtually all gone now. Aitor Gonzalez didn't start either. And Floyd Landis has abandoned on the road. Yes, uh, well, I, I wasn't surprised because we did hear that little rumour a couple of days ago that Floyd was complaining of some kind of a, a, a chest cold. And uh, the best thing for him now is to try and recuperate and uh, maybe he'll participate in the World Championships in a couple of weeks' time. But uh, these riders feel they can't mess around too much because the chasing group is not very much more than 20 seconds in arrears. So if they start jockeying for position before they get to the top of this climb, we could see a return of one or two riders from the back. Well, if they've got that close, they're clearly going quite quick now. They've shut down over these last couple of kilometres, but they have looked to be riding rather casually, these two. There's the group now. I'm not sure that's the second or the third group on the road. That's the third group, I think. One kilometre to go now. Well, now they can, they've got a chance now to start jockeying for position. It's a very rough road, especially when you bear in mind they've been out uh, on the road for an awful long time. Once they get to the top of this little cobble section, the roads actually do start to smooth out. And then uh, Javier Pascual Rodriguez, I think, needs to try and force Para to go into first position because at the end of a long breakaway like this, the body does respond in very strange ways sometimes. Well, Para is going to give this his best shot. He sat behind Rodriguez for the last two kilometres. 
Made sure that Rodriguez sets the pace. I think, though, there's a confidence with Rodriguez, but Para didn't try a single attack, probably because he was aware, perhaps, of this long, straight, flat here. He would have got picked up again, even if he had got away over the cobbles. It didn't look like the, the same finish, in fact, that uh, Frank Vandenberg approached you the week, yeah, a couple of years ago. No, I think they've come round the city, where on that occasion they came straight in and straight up the hill. Now you can see the riders, they will right in the distance see the finishing banner. <laughs> well, this is it now, Rodriguez. The old cat and mouse has started. Don't play around too long, boys, because the chase is coming. It's a scary moment, this, uh, especially when you put all the effort into surviving off the front end of the main field. He's just waiting to see if uh, he can force Para to the front, but Para hasn't made any mistakes at all so far. Well, the Cafe Bacchi riders have had some excellent performances here, largely with Cardenas. Can they get this one as a win? But Kelme are having an exceptional ride, you know. They've still got their man Valverde in the mix and they're picking off stages one by one. Now, can this be another one here? Well, Julier was the last man to score, but this time it's another victory for Kelme. Very, very easy. And I don't think Para's heart was in that. I don't think he had the legs left. Here's the race for third. They were right behind as well. And this is now going to be surely a spin for Johan Holak. He's a very good finisher in a group of only two. That looks like Calcagni of Switzerland, who's come in, being a Calderola. First time we've seen him in the top six finishes. You see the gaps. This is a very difficult running towards the finish. Uh, and when Ahura just came in through there with Horak as well and got himself fourth place. Yep. And this is Cedric Vasseur, a former yellow jersey wearer at the Tour de France. Yes, and has come through a big uh, doping situation there and seems to have got away with it and is now... First time we've seen him up here as well. well the ga gaps are ticking away. There won't be any change to the leaders, that's for sure. Now Vasseur has taken sixth place as is, they race up towards the line. This is Carlos Sastra trying to leap off the front and get himself a few seconds in the overall classification. And I think they'll be very attentive to that. You can see the sprint starting to wind up behind. It looks like Valverde not too far off, and he's right on the wheel there of Roberto Heras. So no time gains, no losses at all. And it looks as though they might even pick up Sastra on the line here. Valverde out of the white jersey he's been wearing for the last couple of days. Now he finds that he's going to get a place here. Now Eric Zabel is not involved in this and Valverde picks off some points. This is running very close. That's not a good result for Zabel in his quest for his third points jersey. Well, all the major contenders very close together, but there you get a chance to see uh, this has been a very difficult uh, run into the city here, the walled city of Avia, and it's split the main field on a number of occasions. Well, there's the result, and again, one that has not affected the overall situation. When Ohora did get fourth, Calcani fifth for Switzerland, 24 seconds down. The other boys coming in uh, all together that mattered, and although the race was badly fragmented, all the favourites came in in that little knot of riders, meaning no change overall. Heras got 1 minute 13, all intact over Perez, Perez Valverde at 2.15, Mancebo, and Isidro Nozal, despite his work for Heras, still holds on in fifth. Onward we go now to stage 19, the three stages to go. From Avia, we go on now to uh, Colaldo Villalba. 142 kilometers today. Oh dear me. The dentist had have a good day out here. Third, second, third, first category in the middle, a couple of third categories, and a reasonable respite and they run it as they run into the finish. That's the thing about the Tour of Spain, very much like the uh, Giro d'Italia, the sting really is very much in the tail, and there's a lot of climbing to do as we reach towards the outskirts of the city of Madrid. This is uh, Zabala, and he's uh, got a very big advantage over the front end of the main field, seven minutes and 41 seconds. Well, he's a survivor, looking at his shoulders, not for much longer there, but he's still up clear at the moment. He has been part, he's coming up the Abantus climb here, scene of the time trial last year, the mountain time trial that Heras rode so well on. And he was part of an original break here of 20, and he is the last survivor, and he's now decided to strike out and go for it. Well, he has, uh, and in fact, uh, he's opened up a very serious advantage over the front end of the main field. This is the remnants of that breakaway at the summit of the Alto de Abantos. Two minutes and 16 seconds uh, to this group. And it was on the very slopes of this mountain here that we saw the destruction last year of Isidro Nozal when he was toppled by Roberto Heras in that very difficult mountain time trial.
Yes, indeed, along this very road, and I can still picture the scenes now. It was a great day uh, for one Spaniard and not such a great day for the other. And now they're both on the same team. Well, this is Constantino Zabaya, and he is now hoping he can hang on here. Doesn't win many races, but this might be one. Just two kilometres to go. It's been a brave move, but when you... You know where you sit in the overall classification. If you can get in the early move that gets the time gaps, you've got the strength to move away from that group, which is what Zabaya has done, then you should win the day. And at three kilometres to go, that gap should be a winning gap. Minute 30 to this group back here. It's interesting to note that the Italians are now starting to ride a lot better. Eddie Mazzolini in this group with the revelation of this year's Giro d'Italia, Damiano Cunego. I think Cunego really riding this race as preparation for the World Championships in Verona, because after all, last time the World Championships was there as an under 23 year old, actually no, as a junior, he was the world champion. Luca Paolini amongst uh, the non-starts today, by the way, while Danilo De Luca and Miguel Perdiguero, their two that have dropped out. The field is now down to 119, and with the final weekend to come, that should be, barring accidents, of course, the size of field that will get into the finish in Madrid. That's about par for the course at this time of the year. One kilometre to go now for Zabaya. Just look at his body, he's all over that machine. He's had a win so far this year, and that was very early on in April. He won the third stage of the Tour of Aragon. Been a professional since 2000. He spent most of his career riding for Kelme. But over this last uh, 12 months, he's actually moved across the ride for Sonia Duval. They're not going to catch him at all here, because still at uh, a kilometer, two kilometers to go, this group is a minute and a half behind. They're separated on the road by just over a kilometer's distance. And the battle in the points competition, by the way, it's 16 points now separating the top two, and there's 25 every time you take a stage. So Valverde still might take the points in this race yet, especially with one more mountain stage to come. Then it's all hands looking towards Zabo in the finish in the grid. Well, I hope not. I've got my fingers crossed for Eric Zabo because it's been an incredible battle since the very first day of the Vuelta a España, between, uh, initially between O'Grady and Zabo, then Pataki and all those riders have actually fallen by the wayside, and Eric Zabo, not with very many teammates left in the race, is still there at the top of that competition. But for this man, it's been a glorious day out. 26 years of age at the home straight, a pro for six se uh, five seasons. Second win of the year, he got a stage of the Tour of Aragon back in April. This is the one he wanted, though, his first serious big stage result. A stage win in the Vuelta Espana. He's a good bike rider, 27 in last year's Tour of Italy. But this is what you want to do, perform in front of the crowd and win the stage. It's only two wins this year, and he's only won four in his career. That's a great result. This is the best one. This is the one that all the Spaniards want. They want to win on home turf and to win in their own event. He's only got, uh, he only had two days left to go to try and get himself a stage victory. This is the second group on the road. And this second group actually contains 15 riders. The main peloton last reported to be more than five minutes back. So they're going to be out of the hunt. And that means that they're racing only four. 17th place, so not many points left at stake. Well, there's Felix Cardenas on the pack there as well, uh, the winner of a, a mountain stage, and also today going into this breakaway situation to get himself some more points in the King of the Mountains, and basically with his ride this afternoon, he's won that competition. He has, he scored on the first climb, and he's made sure he's been noticed, so he's nibbled away to keep his lead in the King of the Mountains today, so he won't take part in the sprint as the riders now swing into the home straight. Well, having said that, he's leading them round the corner. Ah, well, you see, commentator's nightmare. <laughs> say the wrong thing, and there's Cardenas leading for the line now. He won't get second place, I say with confidence, as the sprinters take a hand here. And it looks like Cunego is taking them on, and then Ivanov. Ruslan Ivanov almost checking there to see how he was doing. Well, he's won the sprint for second. Damiano Cunego has got third there, and I think it was possibly Arietta from the Ilus Berilis, uh, Beliris team who's coming just there. Just uh, sidling in off the back was David Latassa from the Kelme squad. Back out to the rest of the race now, and I think we're down the road here at least five minutes. This is Carlos Sastra on the front. Not quite sure why he's riding so hard on the front end of the main field. All of the main contenders are in this group. Roberto Heras very comfortable here this afternoon as we go back to a replay of the finish. And uh, Constantino Zabaya coming up to get his greatest ever victory as a professional. It's only his fourth, but certainly one that will go down in the history books and one that he will remember 
It's been a very long escapade to get this one, having escaped on the summit of that very difficult climb, the Alba Contes. Now he's milking that one up the home straight, and why shouldn't he? Deserves it all of the way. This is sort of bridging the gap now while I wait for the peloton to come in. Let's have a look at the result. It was Ivanov who took it out 123 later from Kunigo. Arietta and Mazzolini, the ever present big Eddie Mazzolini of Saiko in the fifth slot. Here's the moment of trophies. Everybody seems to get a book and uh, also a bouquet of flowers. Well, that's a good win for him. It's a long wait for the main field to come home. <laughs> Let's have a look at the King of the Mountains, and Felix Cardenas has got this now. 60 points clear of the former leader, Heras uh, Perez, with his two stage wins and a second in the mountains. He's up there in third place. Here come the peloton while we've done the adverts, and they're coming in, yes, indeed, now more than six minutes behind. And it's going to be a hurly-burly sprint with... A, no signs there of Eric Zorbel trying to join in at the front. He's gambling now, and I, I would imagine getting a little bit tired as well. He's still got to watch out for Valverde. Heras, you see, staying near the front and safely out of trouble. He's gone across the line there, third or fourth in the group sprint. Not bad for a man that doesn't sprint. Well, he has to be very attentive because, you know, Santi Perez is breathing down his neck. And after all, there's a very interesting final mountain stage to come. And, of course, Roberto Heras is going to come head-to-head -head with him in the final day's individual time trial. So this race is far from one yet by Roberto Heras. The final weekend of the Vuelta España, the 59th edition of this race around the most beautiful country. And it's not flat at all. 178 kilometers, three first category climbs, then a third, and up to the last mountain top finish itself, first category. We head from Alcobendas to the Navasarada, and this is now the final day that Roberto Heras needs show concern over. Tomorrow, well, I'm, I'm probably wrong in saying that, I suspect, because tomorrow's a time trial. Let's just say if he doesn't lose time today, he's in with a better chance of winning the race tomorrow. Let's join the action. Well, this is the front end of the race. Uh, Jimenez is in this group, as is La Tassa. But I think what's uh, probably a little bit more interesting is uh, Martin Dimbaka up there. Tony Cruz is up there for the US Postal Service. This breakaway got away after only 10 kilometers today. And you know, this is the sort of plan that Heras would have come out with to try and get a group of notoriety away that doesn't affect the destiny. Over the top now of the Alto de Leon. And, th and then just hope that he can manage to to look after his nearest rivals. And at the Alto de Leon, at the 121 kilometer point there, it's Eladio Jimenez, the man that won earlier on in the mountains who got over first. And uh, Jose Enrique Gutierrez, uh, Quinziato, Rafael Casero, Daniel Rigi, all of these riders. Uh, Antonio Cruz went over the top there in eighth place. And these are the riders absolutely who are taking the pressure off on the eve of the last day, which is a time trial. Well, this is the final climb now. Cabeza de Carrera, car number one. And that looks like Martin Dimbaka there. And uh, coming up alongside him, Eladio Jimenez for Kelme in second place. And moving up into third place is Jose Enrique Gutierrez of Fonac. These riders are still holding on to a little bit of an advantage over the main field, which is certainly starting to stir itself up. Because after all, this is the last serious chance that anybody has of dethroning Roberto Heras before the final time trial tomorrow in Madrid. 10 kilometers to go. And by the way, at the start this morning, the talk wasn't about the Vuelta España, but about the fact that the three major Grand Tour organizers have told the UCI they want no part of the new Pro Tour next year. They're now saying the Pro Tour is dead, but they don't know the UCI. They're good politicians and they'll push on, I'm sure. Uh, but the big three organisers, Italy, Spain and France, do not want to be involved. I think they don't want to be dictated to because uh, if you take out uh, all of the smaller teams, as we've spoken about on a number of occasions throughout the Vuelta España, teams like, of course, Kelme, teams like Café Barca, those are very often the teams that make some of the intermediary stages in a Grand Tour very aggressive indeed. And if you take them out, it could end up being just very much like a Formula One and we don't want to see the races being dominated by just one single team. Well, it's two very different countryside uh, since the last few days here. Nice wooded area. We're heading on the outskirts of Madrid, and the peloton still uh, unconcerned by this breakaway, or that breakaway, as they start to ride along here. This is uh, 
Benoit Joachim, who's had his taste of gold in that opening week, still very much part of the setup. They've uh, lost four riders on the way, US Postal Service, uh, Floyd Landis, Michael Barry, Max Van Hayswick, and David Zabriskie, but the others are coming home. There's Martin Dembacker at the front there, and this is a comeback here by, uh, it looks very much to me as if this is Luis Perez, and no, it's Cedric Vasseur, he's having a very good final couple of days here coming to out the front. And he was looking for a place in the French team for the World Championships, I would think. And somebody's taken a flyer. Your guess is as good as mine from that position. Ah, well, it's Gutierrez. Jose Enrique Gutierrez yeah. has gone off the front here. Now, I wouldn't have expected that because he's a very big bike rider, and I thought the challenge was going to come from Eladio Jimenez. He seems to have been caught out in the crossfire as those riders were attacking and counter-attacking. Well, Jose Enrique Gutierrez... He's got he a big was, gap. Well, he's, he's a good rider. He was the leader in the Dauphiné this year, having taken victory on stage number two of that race. Let's see how he gets on. He's held the pink jersey in the Giro d'Italia a few years ago now, four to be precise. Just checking over his shoulder there to see if it's worth continuing on. Well, I would suggest it probably is just now. He, again, he's not a big winner, but a vastly experienced rider. And at this stage of the Vuelta, if you're feeling just a little bit strong, you've got to give it your best shot because the chances are it'll work. You see he's now getting to the slightly steeper part of the climb. It's kicking in at around about 8%. He's getting into a nice rhythm. He's uh, taking the bull by the horns here, really, and if he's going to try and stay off the front, he's got to give it everything if he can, but he's going to find the chase very hard from riders like Cedric Vasseur, who seems to, over the last couple of days, have ridden himself into very good form. The front end of the main field, well, it's no surprise, really, Phil, to see the blue jerseys of Liberty Seguros all over the front. Uh, they're at eight kilometres to go. They're a long way behind, three minutes and 49 seconds. There's Heras right in the middle of that V formation. And... Uh, Riders from Seiko have been very attentive over the last couple of days too. This is a very dangerous stage. The day before the finish of the race, the time trial tomorrow, it's a long uphill climb to the finish, almost now eight kilometres of climbing. They're not worried about the breakaway, but the infighting, I feel, they've got to attack. Whether Harass will attack, or should he wait and see if Perez goes or Valverde? But there's still seconds to be gained and lost on this race. I don't think he's got to worry too much about Alejandro Valverde. He's too far down in the overall classification. He's lost himself more than three minutes now. The man he really needs to keep a very close eye on is the man that I'm I wouldn't think very many people uttered the name of before the start of the Vuelta, Santiago Perez. And here he is now in second place in the overall classification and a serious challenger for the win. Still, because the battle of the time trial tomorrow, it might be a slow motion time trial because neither Perez nor uh, Heras are seen as great time trial riders on flat roads. Well, we'll see tomorrow. It's going to be a nervous day for both of them, that's for sure. And it's going to be a decisive day right on the last possible kilometres of the Vuelta. It would be possible for the jersey to change shoulders. Now, this rider's not thinking of a golden jersey. He's thinking of a golden handshake when he wins the stage from the team, I would think. Absolutely. He's uh, got a slight advantage. It's not really very much. He's only got about 15 seconds advantage over Eladio Jimenez and David Latassa. But you can see there is a, a slight acceleration now coming, and this uh, looks like Oscar Sevilla. Yep, Oscar Sevilla it is. Baby face Oscar. He's trying to set up Santiago Perez. And that's the idea now. Oscar Sevilla had a very quiet Vuelta a España. And Team Fonac now are trying to put a bit of pressure onto Roberto Heras. Heras hasn't taken the bait just yet. He's still sitting at the back end of that long line of riders. The big advantage that Roberto Heras has, I think, Phil, is over the last four or five years, he's ridden alongside a man by the name of Lance Armstrong. He knows how to control situations like this. And that really is one of the reasons why he wanted to go across to U.S. Postal Service. Yes, it took away his chances of possibly having a crack at winning the Tour, but mm. it also taught him an awful lot about being a leader. The ironical thing is they're having to cause a reaction here which might terminate the breakaway up the road of their own teammate, Gutierrez. But this is Valjevec. He's actually come good, very good, in this last week. He's been showing a lot at the front. And this Fonac team, well, frankly, they haven't missed Tyler Hamilton because they have played a very big role in this race without him. This is Luis Perez on the front for Cofidis. He, too, has uh, ridden a very solid Vuelta a España, one of the best riders uh, the Cofidis have had here. We had Stuart O'Grady very present in the first part of the event. And Not sure what happened there. Is that Valjevic? He seemed to lock up his bike and he's dropped back very <laughs> he quickly. He locked up his legs, probably. Yeah, probably was. Need some oil for his legs. 
Peras attentive there he is in about third or fourth position I think that's Aitor Gonzalez moving up into uh, second spot there 9% this is the kind of gradient that Roberto Heras starts to like uh, especially once it mm. gets over the 10% mark look at the altitude there 1400 meters this is the back of the group but the peloton has started to become extremely fragmented this is Le Seca who's in trouble there number 65 and he's had his fair share of victories in these races those long lanky legs of his have climbed like rabbits before but today he's finding the speed too much five kilometers to go and he's still on his own up here Looking over his shoulder, what he's actually looking to see what the position is of the riders who he left just a few moments ago, and he hasn't really got that much of an advantage over Jimenez and La Tassa. This is Perez, Roberto Heras there, looking over at his teammate Isidro Nozal, saying, come on, can uh, you find anything else in that box of courage of yours? And we've got to keep control of this. This is a last mountain climb, and now as a leader, of the race, Roberto Harris has been forced to take over control at the front. Francisco Mancebo, fourth overall, two minutes and 16 seconds down. There's Damiano Cunego. He's actually riding a lot better towards the yes. end, and I'm sure that's a lot to do, Phil, with the fact that the World Championships is in Girona, uh, Verona this year. Yeah, in Verona, in Italy. It's, it, he's an amazing rider when you think he's only 22 years of age, and this is his second major tour of the year. Now, that is a lot to say for a young pair of legs. He hasn't played a big lead role in this event, but he's ridden the race out and he'll finish tomorrow in Madrid. Boy, next year that guy is going to be worth watching. Look at this attack now coming on the inside of Perez. Actually, can't see who it is, but it looks like it might be a Patanina rider. Well, I think it might actually be uh, Santiago. Oh, no, it is a no, Patanina rider. It's a Jorge Ferrerio. They're taking the helmets off now. Yes, it's Ferrerio. And uh, he's been riding a very good race as well. Luis Perez on his wheel and they uh, I don't think they've got any interest at all in chasing these two riders I think finally here you can see on the front is Idrin Ozal has found a little bit more effort there to try and pace Roberto Heras just that little bit longer what a great ride by this rider from Liberty Seguros he really has been a great ally for Roberto looking down the line there that's uh, Valverde yes Very down the attentive. line that's the operative word though because it looks as though here, Heras is hooked up to his express engine and he's going to move by him and see if he can finish off his challenges before the time trial because I think Roberto would feel a bit happier if he could just chisel even only 10 seconds off uh, away from the leadership of Perez, or away from the deficit of Perez because Perez must be a big danger in that time trial tomorrow. Well, he's had a very easy first uh, 10 days of the Vuelta. He didn't really have a lot of pressure on his shoulders as a challenger, and he's going to come into the last few days feeling rather fresh. This is Nozal, and I'm sure he's not feeling very fresh at all because he's done an awful lot of work throughout this bike race. There's Valverde. He's actually starting to look a lot better now. Just sitting at the back of the group there. Very comfortable rider. A man uh, who I think has got a very good chance of winning the World Championships later on this year. Pipoli. He's had a very quiet last couple of days, but he's been a great rider, won himself a mountain top finish. Herasville, I think now just starting to tick away at the kilometers, just waiting for the, the last individual time trial, probably with a little bit of reticence because he certainly is not a great individual time trialist. He's showing no signs of effort, and you look at the effort on Mancebo's face. Different contrast altogether. There's Cadenas. He's running out the king of the mountains for the second year in succession. And he really never thought he would be able to do that this year. Well, he has had a couple of great journeys through the mountains. Now, they've only just reached five kilometres to go. There's the time, 3 minutes 14. That should see Gutierrez as the stage winner. And another good win for Fonak, who've used three different riders to win stages so far. David Blanco having a very difficult time at the back. Well, there's a rider from Sonia de Val come back there, but he was on the original breakaway, and he's back in the pack anyway. And it looks as though Zabal will have to hope that Valverde doesn't turn in a good time trial tomorrow, finish up amongst the leaders, because that would give Valverde the points competition. Because uh, there'll be no score here for Eric, and there could be a score for Valverde. It's going to be a tight finish in the points. It won't be solved today, that's for sure. So there's Valverde on the left, Roberto Heras, just sitting at the back of the group here, keeping a very close eye on Santiago Perez. So Garcia acceleration from Kelme yeah they, uh, I think once again are going to try and put Roberto Harris into difficulty sixth overall Garcia Quesada six minutes 16 down and Cardenas I think Oof. has called it a day 
the king of the mountains just lost his love of the mountains I think he decided to call and just sit down that's why look at that well, this is all because of that pressure that's being put on the front end of this group by Isidro Nozal now there's another attack coming here this is Garcia again he's gone straight through no, this is Valverde. This is, is that Valverde? This is Valverde. It didn't no. look like him, did it? But it is. It is indeed Alessandro Valverde looking around. He'll turn off. Oh, here's Garcia. He'll turn off again. Now that he's seen uh, Heras uh, marshalling well, another big move here. Mancebo's gone, and that's the one that's got to be answered by Roberto Heras. And that I this think. This is Perez. This is Perez. I beg your pardon, Santiago Perez. No wonder Heras came out. The battle of the top two, de top two riders. Seconds could mean the big difference in the time trial tomorrow. Uh, Heras is having a bit of a problem. He's not quite got onto the wheel there. He's really having to struggle to stay in contact here with the man who, over the last couple of days, is turning out to be a very serious challenger to the supremacy of Liberty Seguros. Uh, Roberto, I think, now can breathe a slight sigh of relief because he's made the junction, but this is the first and second riders in the overall classification. But Heras is really being put under pressure with just 24 hours left to go in this race. Well, that, that's terrific great aggressive riding by Santiago Perez and it has taken a big dig dib for um, Heras to answer this one he's done it and he's locked on and he's in his slipstream but what's he feeling like inside and can Perez go again indeed because you know even a 10 second gain right now we'd be looking at just around a minute in the time trial tomorrow that is possible it's going to be very close and it will be rather interesting to see what the time trial is going to be like because I'm sure Roberto Heras is not too keen to use too much energy on the eve of that very important time trial. This is uh, Valverde in second position, Mancebo just on his wheel. Those two riders are third and fourth in the overall classification and the man doing the majority of the work on the front is uh, Carlos Garcia Quesada. And he's sixth overall, so all the top men are here. Now Perez picking off the remnants of the breakaway. Just leaving up the front there, Aras Garate, I think, who's just gone, slipped through our picture there. Oh, it was Kinziato, he was up in that move and he was getting places on the mountains too, but he's had enough now, they've picked him up. So Heras separated from Valverde by 17 seconds, but he's got his eyes here on the man who is regarded as his closest rival. Uh, this is Carlos Sastra, a little bit further down the slopes, he's managed to reintegrate the group of Valverde. Seventh overall, just about eight minutes down. A very consistent bike rider, Carlos Sastre. He was hoping for a podium finish here at the Vuelta, but that's not going to happen. The gap between these great challengers, Heras Perez and Valverde Mancebo, is stretched out now to 20 seconds. And I have to say, once again, Phil, uh, as we get down to the last couple of days, uh, Roberto Heras is not really looking very comfortable. Well, he's certainly not very comfortable, but the fact is this little man fights and the days are working out in his favour. And, uh, well, it wouldn't be a great win if he weren't put under some sort of difficulty. And Roberto Heras knows that this race will not be decided today now. It is going to go to the time trial tomorrow between these two riders. He's not helping Santiago Perez. He won't go past him in case he gets jumped. And the big boys, all of them in the top six overall, they're all behind now and they're all getting themselves together. Valverde looking pretty good, looks over his shoulder, he wants to see what the face of Francisco Mancebo looks like. And he's decided to stay quite happily in the slipstream of his own teammate Garcia. 22 seconds the difference between the Heras group and the Valverde group. Valverde once again losing a little bit of time on this final climb of the Vuelta face of uh, Santiago Perez nobody mentioned this rider's name in any preview I saw of the Vuelta Espana he wasn't to be expected to be a challenger Tyler Hamilton was the leader of the phone act team he's no longer in the tour uh, a big question mark hanging over his career I have to say right now as Roberto Heras just hangs on knowing he need do no more than not concede a single second because it could make the difference in the final time trial. And they're both gaining over Valverde, Mancebo and that group, and that's good news for them both. The top two riders in the Vuelta are going to go to the time trial head-to-head -head and may the best man win, because these boys are now confirming the fight for only third place. They're picking up a lot of riders as they accelerate up the slopes There's quite a big mountain. breakaway up the mountain. Our camera's unable to show them, but they've been out all day and now they're paying the price. Well, this is the battle that we want to see, the battle between Santiago Perez and Roberto Heras. Heras just sitting there, keeping his eye on the back wheel of the man who is uh, 
I'm sure later on going to try and dethrone him. This is the last chance he's got to pull back some time before the individual time trial. Start of the day, these two men are separated by a minute and 13 seconds, but Roberto will not be too excited to go into this individual time trial with a gap of a minute 13. I think he would be much more comfortable if it was a closer to the two-minute mark. So he too has got to try and do something to make his time trial tomorrow just that little bit simpler. If he'd had two minutes, then we needn't have worried about the time trial tomorrow, but these are the rest of the breakaway that have been spread across the mountain today. As uh, we look over our shoulder, there's only two going to be one rider ahead. I'm not sure how many we've caught. To be honest, look at this, though. Perez has taken his chance through the traffic. He's lifted the revs, and again, he has hurt Roberto Heras. He takes that little while to find his feet, and this time he may have beaten him. He really has hit him hard this time. He's got the gap, and the important thing is to be on a rider's wheel, and uh, I think Roberto Heras uh, was maybe just looking the other way as they caught up that little gaggle of riders, and he was caught unawares by this very violent violent attack by this man Santiago Perez that starts the day a minute and 13 seconds off the overall lead of Roberto Heras and today he's really put Roberto Heras into difficulty we almost forgot about the man stealing the glory the individual glory of the stage there just a little bit further up the road Jose Enrique Gutierrez he's still hanging on to a nice advantage but this is a massive battle and if he fails over the final kilometer, this man might well just pick him up because he's picking up the majority of that early morning breakaway. This is incredible here. This is a battle to the final day now for sure. Roberto Heraz, I wonder what he's thinking because he knows how he's feeling and he knows that if he loses too many seconds, tomorrow he could lose this race in the time trial. Well, what a turnaround that would be a year on because he took the race in the time trial last year. And now he would find out the other end of the sting because Ooh. I have to, and that was close. That was very close. I saw close. that happen. That's so dangerous. There's a lot of people now are using these flags and getting them very close to the riders. And uh, we've seen it in races like Paris-Roubaix when it's almost caused an accident. In fact, the Flemish government actually tried to ban the Flemish lion flags from the side of the road, saying they were v much too dangerous and were actually uh, a negative impact in the publicity of the country. Wouldn't be easy to ban them, but... Uh, <laughs> no. One can understand their feelings behind it. Well, there on the left is the lone leader. On the right, the attacker racing for gold. On the left, the defending champion of the tour, hoping to stay in gold. What a great tour this has been this year. Well, there are three, four riders uh, still in front of Santiago Perez. Jose Enrique Gutierrez Ooh. is up. And look at this, 11 seconds between Heras. Heras and Perez. So Roberto Heras, look at this. He's really got to do something special now. This is a, an individual time trial between these two men. They're trying to stay as closely locked together as they can going into the final time trial. Second on the road is Eladio Jimenez. Third on the road is David Latassa. And this man here is slowly but surely eating his way up through the advantage. I don't think he's going to come anywhere near catching them. But what is more important to him is the time gap between himself and this man, the man who wears the golden jersey, Roberto Heras. Number one, the golden man of the tour, trying to do what only Tony Romager has done, and that's win the Vuelta Espana three times. But all of a sudden, there's a huge doubt over that now. There's no doubt who the winner is going to be, but can this rider here take the gold jersey and come from around 13 to 14 overall and to the top position by the time this race finishes? Let's give this man his due now. Another win for Fonac here. Jose Enrique Gutierrez gets a stage win in the Vuelta. His first ever, by the way, which is great for the Spanish rider. Finished sixth in Paris Tours last year, which is still to come. He's a good sprinter, but he didn't need his sprint today. He certainly didn't. He's obviously a very good climber too, and uh, surviving that 20-man breakaway that got away very early on in the day, and uh, he's managed to survive up to the summit of this very difficult climber, the Navaterrada. This man, though, is extending his advantage over Roberto Harras with almost every pedal stroke. This today, Phil, is actually going to make tomorrow's individual time trial a very close match between the two men in first and second place. This is Eladio Jimenez, he's had his stage win for Kelme. The Kelme have had a great race. Today, he's crossing the line in second place, but it's the time gap between Perez and Heras, which is going to reveal all. And he's still climbing. The white jersey is the combine leader's jersey, by the way. Uh, that's why he's not in his team colours today. 22 seconds, that is a very big gap there. Cedric Vasseur, I've forgotten about him. He was also a member of that early morning breakaway. He's been caught there by Roberto Heras. And Funnily enough, a couple of years ago, those two riders were teammates. 
This is David Latasta. Kelmay getting the third place finish. He was in the breakaway as well. We haven't seen anything of him. Sorry about that. Our cameras are rather committed now. But he comes up into third place. A minute and... Oh, oh. Look, oh this is Perez, That's coming, Perez. In, coming in now. That's Perez with the cars and the cameras. And then the clock will really start. And he's coming up here at a terrific rate of knots. Right up alongside the crowd. He's going to take fourth place on the stage. The clock starts now at 1 minute and 37 seconds on that clock. Every second now could put him in a winning position tomorrow in the time trial. And this is not Heras. This is Aitor Perez coming up the line. We're looking around the corner. There is Heras now in front of all of those cars. He's got Cedric Vasseur alongside him, but this is going to be a very big battle now tomorrow in the individual time trial. Because Roberto Heras, Phil, here has lost himself almost 30 seconds on Santiago Perez. Not almost, exactly. 30 seconds is the gap. And now that is a huge loss to Heras for the time trial to come. And that, I suggest, is exactly what Perez wanted to get that much closer to Roberto and a 30-second gain, it is all possible. Everything is possible right now. This is the man who won the stage, Jose Enrique Gutierrez, 38 seconds ahead of Eladio Jimenez. But more importantly, the fourth-place finish there of Santiago Perez, 30 seconds ahead of Roberto Heras. It's going to be a hell of a showdown. Oh, it's going to be one terrific race tomorrow. Santiago Perez, this is Gutierrez here, saluting the crowd. We look down the barren slopes of the mountain, and there is the confirmation. Perez is now just 43 seconds off gold, and tomorrow's the race of truth between the two of them. The rest are racing the third place marginally. Mancebo and uh, Valverde, the only two who can fight out that third place finish. Well, he's still smiling, but deep down when he looks at the overall result tonight, he's going to feel a bit rough inside, I think. The final stage of this year's 59th Vuelta España, as always, we're at home in Madrid. And the race now, a race of truth, 28.2 kilometres. There's no hills, even Eric Zorbel's worried about where Valverde will finish because he can still lose the points competition. We're now going to see, and all of the interest, let's face it, is in the last two riders to start, separated after three weeks of racing by a bag full of seconds. Well, there's a big battle too for third place as well. Let's not forget between Mancebo and Valverde. They were only separated by a number of seconds too. This is the man who starts second from the last, and this is the man who believes today he's got the ability to win the Vuelta a España, Santiago Perez. Two stage wins out on course. There's only one man left to start behind him, and that's the man who won the Vuelta a España last year, Roberto Heras. This is going to be a huge battle. Well, Carlos Sastra coming through at 10.5 kilometres, best time at the moment by David Blanco, 13.33. It's all academic now. We're just waiting for the arrival of the top two, to be honest. Uh, but now we're seeing the last man of the 119 survivors taking his start. Roberto Heras, what a moment. He's not a noted time trial rider, but then neither is Santiago Perez on a course like this. It's going to be a case of who can turn it on on the day. Well, he'd be very interested to see the first time check. I'm absolutely certain of that. The only thing that he brings across with him, I think, from the US Postal Service is the fact that he knows how to handle himself as leader of a bike race. He knows how not to panic in situations like this. He's the kind of rider who does have the ability to pull something very special out of the bag. And over the last couple of years, he's taken the advantage of the US Postal Service's investment in finding an aerodynamic time trial position. That's one thing he wanted to improve. And I wonder if it's going to pay today. Here comes Isidro Nozal, slipping away. He lost his lead on this same day last year, which was a Saturday, in fact, last year, the penultimate day in the mountain time trial, Abantos. Uh, now Nozal doesn't have to worry about how high he finishes. He's been second, so he's not going to worry about losing a place today. He's gone through here with the sixth best time. He's a third time trial rider, but can this man produce a, yet another ride of his life? He came here without a care in the world to support Tyler Hamilton. Now on this last day, he's racing to win the Vuelta Espana. I tell you what, he looks very good on that machine, a nice aerodynamic machine. He's got a full disc wheel in the back to reduce the amount of turbulence at the back end of the machine. The first time check is going to be very important for everybody. This is Valverde. He too has got an important rendezvous this afternoon because he could ride himself into third place and get himself onto the podium. Won't be easy. It's the riders behind that count, of course, behind him. He's only coming through here, slipping out of the top ten, just in the top ten at the moment. 
giving 24 seconds away to Blanco. And it looks as though he will be lucky now to break into the top three on the podium and equal his position of a year ago. This is their head-to-head. -head. On the right, Santiago Perez. On the left, Roberto Heras. The only thing they've got in common, they're both from Spain. Time to beat to David Blanco there. And this is a very good ride by Francisco Mancebo. He goes there, through there just huge. two seconds in arrears, so he's holding on to his third place for, at the moment. That's a huge result for him. Might be a good result for Eric Zabel too, Paul, because he's going to push Valverde down the points competition. Yeah, Valverde uh, will be trying to get himself up there if he can. Santiago Perez, the time to beat David Blanco, and this, I think, is going to be a new best time here. 13.33, the clock will stop as he crosses the line, and is he going to do it? This is going to be very close at 10 and a half kilometres. He's just gone inside that time by one second one second best time perez unimportant in effect we want to see now the arrival of uh, roberto heras and he's gonna have to do one of the rides of his life here if he's gonna hang on of course it's a question of can perez get back 43 seconds not just one but we'll see here comes tricky beltran as he races up and uh, tricky has had a great ride so too is us postal this is the last grand tour don't forget as the sponsorship moves across to the Discovery Channel next time around. Now, this is the this time is the check. One. This is 10.5 kilometres for Roberto Heras. The time to beat or the time to stay Ooh. in contact with is Santiago Perez. And it's four seconds is not much. The four seconds is nothing. He's still holding on now. It's going to be desperate. I think it's in the favour of Heras, that particular four-second deficit, 13.32. Davi Blanco setting uh, beat Grabsch's in, but Blanco's been setting the best times, so we should see Grabsch's time updated on the line. Yes, we do for the moment. 16 seconds quicker for Blanco. David Blanco taking the fastest time now, 35 minutes and 23 seconds. I give the advantage here to Roberto Heras. Now, this is what the, the overall classification looks like at 10 and a half kilometers. Roberto Heras still holding on to a 39 second advantage. Now, if he only loses four seconds for every 10 kilometers of this event, he's going to run out <laughs> the overall leader. Oh, by quite a, quite a margin in the end, I suspect, but. Uh I remind you the shortest possible victory. It was Eric Caratu in 1984. He won the race by just six seconds. This has always been a race of seconds. There's been a lot of narrow victories over the years in the Vuelta. But it could be reversed still today. Carlos Sastra finishing a very strong race. Rides for the Danish CSC team. They haven't really been the prominent team this year in the Vuelta that they were during the midsummer <laughs> tour de France. Best but time. now he's got the best time. That's amazing. And exactly 30 miles an hour, his average speed, 10 seconds to the good. Well, this is the big battle. And you know what? Roberto Herasville is actually holding on. It's hovering at the five and six second advantage between those two riders. Harris has got to pull himself inside out to try and stay in that golden jersey. And I'm sure last night when he went to bed, he was thinking about the time that he lost the lead in the Vuelta a España on the final day. I hope that doesn't happen to him here this afternoon. Well, Mancebo is hoping to keep third place here, and he's looking good. Well, he's just gone through there with the best time, and he's trying to keep himself in third place. That is probably one of his best ever time trial performances. Inspired. In this Vuelta a España, the climbers this year are turning out some very good individual time trials, even on the flat. It's been a great welter in many, many ways. The sprinters go on breaks in the mountains. The climbers go on great times in the time trials. This is Garcia, Carlos Garcia, 12th place for him. He played a big part, though, out in the mountains this last couple of weeks, looking after Valverde. This rider, it's beginning to slip a little bit. He's got first place up here at 23 kilometres, which means he's come through, but, you know, it's a question of what Heras is doing. Well, Heras is the next man on the road, and he's just two minutes before he gets to that time check, and we'll get an indication of whether or not he's able to keep himself at least in contact with the time of Santiago Perez. This guy has been the unbelievable revelation of this year's Vuelta a España. He has. Now, Heras out of the saddle. His body is screaming out in request for the white flag to be put up, but I don't think he can do that for the next 12 kilometres or so. He'll probably know now whether he's winning or not because his team car will have told him on that race radio the time gaps, which will be crucial now. But it does look as though Santiago Perez could deliver another stage-winning ride here. it would be another time trial victory for him, and that's quite amazing, a man we've not known hardly anything about. Here's Isidro Nozal. He slipped away a little bit there. Not surprisingly, his job is done this time around. Here comes Heras at 23 kilometres. 
Perez best time and Roberto goes through second best time. Well, that's right. The top two men in the tour, one and two. Just the wrong way around at the minute for the supporters of Perez. Seven seconds, Roberto Heras. And uh, I think, do you remember what I said about if he only loses four seconds for every 10 kilometres? Well, he lost four seconds for the first 10. <laughs> now three. Three seconds for the next. And if he loses another four, well, thank you very much. He's going to win this bike race overall. He'll happily concede that. This is, a, again, a situation where when you have something to get out of the race, you ride a good time trial, even if you're not a good time trial rider. Words of Sean Kelly. Santiago Perez, though, he's looking here to try and cause the upset on the final day, the final 28 kilometres. Well, the provisional overall classification at 23 kilometres covered is still advantage Roberto Eras and still by 36 seconds, but Santiago Perez is slowly chipping away, but he's actually running out of kilometres for me. He is five kilometres, all that remains after that time check. Hardly time to change a wheel, uh, but it is, and that would be the only thing now, I think, to take a third victory away from Roberto. But boy, he's been in a fight and he's been bruised, and he's been bruised by a man that we haven't really seen or heard of ever before. Alejandro Valverde came into this race as a man who could win it. In the end, he's tired. He's finished 11th in the time trial. He's conceded a minute already to Carlos Sastra. So he will only finish fourth because Mancebo coming in now has closed right in on him. Well, what a great ride. And he's actually, I think, on arrival the time there of Carlos Sastra. 35-13 is the time that's been set by Sastra at the top end of the overall classification. Mancebo is all over that machine. It really is a strange position the way he tilts his head over to one side, but he's doing a superb ride in the individual time trial here. And I think we're looking here at a new best time. I'm sure you're right now, and again, another example of how a climber and the champion of the road race of Spain can deliver a time trial when it matters. He wanted to stand on the podium, he gets his wish. This will be a third-place finish for him overall, and for the moment at least, it will just be oh, first place by wow. a whole second. Wow, that was close, very close indeed, and he's happy with that. He knows he's got onto the podium right now. He knew immediately the time he had to beat. That would have been communicated to him. He had to beat Valverde to stay up there, and he's done that nice and comfortably. But there are still two men left out on the open road. This man is picking up the pace. He can feel the golden jersey. He wants that golden jersey. He wants to rip it off the shoulders of Roberto Heras. Taking a few risks now, coming into town. Look at the speed. He's inside now, the final kilometre, 1,000 metres to go and he's used all of the road there <laughs> that was a bit of a I was just thinking to myself what a lovely course this is and he almost ran out of road but Santiago Perez is now in the last 800 metres of a remarkable Vuelta Espana for him from the depths of the mid-teens of the classification to probably second overall but first here because this is going to be best time for the day now the 118th man to come home of the 119 riders, Santiago Perez, will get his third stage win of this race. And there it is, seven seconds quicker than Mancebo. That was a good ride by Mancebo. Perez won't beat that time, but he better not lose it by too much. Well, what we've got to wait for now is the arrival of Roberto Heras, the last man, the man in the golden jersey of leadership. And here is the time, 35.05 is the time that has been set by Santiago Perez, but Roberto Herrera started the day with a 43-second advantage. So far, at the last time check, he'd only lost seven seconds of that, and he looks to me like he really is on a mission here. This could very well be one of the best time trials that Roberto Herrera has ever ridden on the flat. He's made him fight as Santiago Perez, and he's been up to the game. It's been a wonderful battle through the mountains, including the mountain time trial, now on a flat road in the centre of Madrid. Robert Roberto Heras is setting his own personal record of three wins in the Vuelta. He joins Tony Romager, the only other man to have won this race three times. So Heras becomes the first Spanish rider to do it. 35.05, he's not going to get up here to beat that time. But at the end of the day, these two boys have gone pedal rhythm for pedal rhythm and it's not going to matter. It's going to be a tight finish. It's going to be another day that the Vuelta goes down in history, having been won by just a hatful of seconds, despite the terrain on what has been one of the most difficult recent Vueltas. 35.05 is about to pass by, but the man in the golden jersey won't see it removed from his shoulders by Santiago Perez. There's the time. Into second place goes Heras. 
fitting, though. I think he's going to finish this race in second. Well, he's still got 40 seconds to get himself to the finish line, and I'm absolutely certain he's going to do that. And you can see the clock ticking by. It has to be 35-48, and he's gone inside that. In fact, he's finished fourth on the stage, and he knows that. He is very happy with that time trial performance. He only lost 13 seconds, so he'll win the Vuelta a España by 30. That's a great result for Heras. He really had to work for that. He could never have gone to bed on any night on this Vuelta and slept easily because he'd been stalked throughout the final 10 days by Santiago Perez. And Perez got his answer here. His third stage win. Mancebo finishing a brilliant second. Sasta hanging on for third. Heras fourth. And David Blanco has been riding well, though he hasn't quite delivered the goods in, five, in fifth place. Well, this beautiful city of Madrid, now all set for the prize presentation and the overall result. And it's going to tell us pretty quickly that the overall winner is Roberto Heras. He becomes a three-time winner of this race in the 59th edition of the Vuelta España. First of all, a word for Santiago Perez. Three stage wins and the crucial stages, a big mountain stage, the mountain time trial and the last day. There's the result. Well, as he says himself, this last week of the race here at the Vuelta España, Phil, has been an absolute and utter dream. And he's a man now that can uh, come up to the Vuelta España next year with the title of challenger. And after a great battle over the first week with uh, Alexandro Pataki and Stuart O'Grady, the man who gets the points championship, Eric Zabel. At the expense of Alejandro Valverde in the end, but look at that, eight points was all it was. It was a close one. Roberto Heras third in that competition, and Perez not surprisingly fourth with his three-stage wins. But Eric Zabel had a wonderful day out. This is the King of the Mountains competition here. Felix Cardenas, uh, the winner of this competition last year, and exactly as he did last year, he won himself a mountain top finish as well. 56 points to the good again over the ever consistent Heras. He must win the combination race as well. Heras with his high finishes, and Perez, Perez there getting third, and Eladio Jimenez. But this is the jersey they all want. Only one man takes it home, of course, and he's held the lead here uh, for the last half of this race since taking it in the mountains. Roberto Heras now has three victories. He won in 2000, um, and he also won in 2003. He wins by just 30 seconds from Santiago Perez. How nice to see a new name on the block. Mancebo gets the better of Valverde, and that was an exceptional ride by Garcia to finish in fifth place, albeit seven and three-quarter minutes behind. There they are on the podium, and this has been a great Vuelta España, and I hope you've all enjoyed it. For Paul Sherwin, I'm Phil Liggett saying, until the next time, goodbye.